Here's a problem for all of you basketball fans, basketball players, friends of basketball fans, friends of basketball players. I think that should probably include just about everybody. The problem is, how would we construct a histogram that looks somewhat like this, given the data from the last 70 games played that has points per game? So this should say games, where we have the first game, 10 points were scored. In the second game, seven points were scored. All the way down to the 70th game in which 15 points were scored. Okay. Some of the things I want you to start thinking about are how many columns or cells, each of these is a cell, should a histogram contain? Have you ever wondered about that? Another question is how many units should be between the boundaries between these different cells? In other words, what is the distance between this midpoint here and this midpoint here, and so on? There are five straightforward steps for constructing histograms. The first step consists of constructing, determining the range. We need to determine that range so that we can calculate the cell intervals. Again, cell intervals are the distances between each cell and this will be the same for each cell. Then we need to calculate the cell midpoints. We'll do this for each of these cells. And that will allow us to determine the cell boundaries. And once we have that, we can take each of these data and put them into the histogram depending on which cell they belong to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put all this data in an Excel spreadsheet. Excel's easy to work with. You can see we have 70 games and the points scored in each of those 70 games. What I want to do that will make this a lot easier is sort the points scored per game in ascending order. I want to do that because the first step is to determine the range. Range is capital R. And what R equals, you should be able to tell me this, it's the largest value, the largest observation, to subtract the smallest observation. So to do this, all we got to do is go down here and find the largest value, subtract the smallest value. Step number two, is we need to calculate the cell interval. The formula for cell interval is I, I is the cell interval, equals the range divided by 1 plus 3.322 times the log of N. So we have R divided by 1 plus 3.322 times the log of, what's n in this case? n is the number of observations. We have 70 games, so I'm going to punch in 70. Okay, so our cell interval is about 2, 1.96 or so. I don't need all of those significant figures, so I'm just going to go to two significant figures. Okay, the next question with this step number two is how many cells are we going to have? So I'll put number of cells and H is what we call the number of cells. We'll put an I up here for cell interval. And we can use a nifty formula where H equals R divided by I. So I'm going to go H equals the range divided by the cell interval. Okay, so we're going to have about seven cells. Let's just round down, seven cells. We're already on to step number three. We need to calculate the cell midpoints. Let's calculate the midpoint of the first cell first. The smallest observation plus I divided by two. I'm going to select six which was the lowest scoring game, plus the cell interval divided by 2. 
Okay, looks like the cell midpoint of the first cell is going to be 6.98. Let's go ahead and start creating a table here that will have the data for each of these cells. And let's put the midpoints in here. So the first midpoint will be 6.98. To get the second midpoint, all we have to do is select the 6.98 and add 1.96, the cell interval. I'm going to drag this down and we'll have all seven cell midpoints. Put the number sign here and this should drag down real easy. All right, we're already on to step number four where what we're going to calculate now are the cell boundaries. The sign for this is UB. We'll do the upper boundary first. Let's do the first one of the first cell and this equals the first midpoint plus the second midpoint divided by two. Add this one to this one and divide by two. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. I'm just going to put in this cell boundary here, the upper boundary. And what we should be able to do is put in the low boundary as well. And this will be that 7.96, the upper boundary, minus the lower boundary. To get the rest of the upper boundaries, I'm going to add the cell interval. And I'm going to do the same to get the lower boundary. We're on to the last step where we want to group the data. So all I have to do now is count up the number of games where the score fell between these two boundaries for each of these seven cells. Okay, so for the first cell, we're looking for points between 6 and 7.96. So we have 6 and 7. Let's put a 2 in here. For the second cell, we're looking for games where between 7.96 and 9.93 points were, game, were scored. So basically we're looking for games with 8 or 9 points, and we have two of these, and so on. Okay, so now that I have this table filled in, I'm just about ready to plot this frequency histogram. One point I want to make, though, is that it doesn't necessarily make sense to have an upper boundary for the last cell. And you can see that this formula told us that there would be 7.13 cells. And that goofed up the categorization. So I'm going to delete this because we're going to have greater than 7 cells. Um, you can see that that game with the 20 points wouldn't have fit in if we had left this upper boundary in here. So I'm just going to delete this. And it on the same token, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have a lower boundary on the first cell. So I'm going to delete this. Okay, so now we're ready to plot our frequency histogram. I'm going to create a chart, select the data, add a series. The y-axis is the number of games with, on the x-axis, the number of points scored in that number of games. Okay. There is our frequency histogram. Next, I want to talk about the four different types of histograms. The first one is the frequency histogram. We just plotted that. The second is the relative frequency histogram. The third is the cumulative frequency histogram. And the fourth is the relative cumul cumulative frequency histogram. Let's do the second one now. We want to do the relative frequency histogram. We had 70 games played. Okay? So what we're going to do is divide each of these games by 70. And now what we can do is change the data on this. so that the y is no longer number of games, it's the relative frequency of the number of games in which that particular uh, number of points were scored. Done. So we can change the name of this, okay? 
going to change the title of each of these columns so we can keep them straight. Next, we're going to make the cumulative frequency histogram. All that we have to do to get this is add up the cells on top of one another. So for the second cell, I'm going to add this 2 plus 2 from the first cell. For the third cell, I'm going to add the first and second cells. and so on. So now I'm going to put this data into this chart. I'm going to change the y-axis so that now we have the cumulative frequency data. And for the last one, the relative cumulative frequency histogram, what we do is divide each of these observations by 70, the number of games played. And once we have that, we can create this last table. And there we go. Not bad. I would throw this player in every single game.